In this video, we're going to look at duplication tools inside of our Sketch environment. Here I have the Sketch Duplication IPT from our Working Files directory. I'm going to begin by double clicking on Sketch 1 to activate it. The duplication tools that we're going to look at are all located here on the Pattern panel of our Sketch tab. I'm going to begin with the rectangular pattern and utilize the shape here to the right. First, I will select my geometry with a window selection, specify direction one and direction two. I can also flip these directions if they weren't going the right way and also adjust my spacings as well as the counts. Just do a little bit more adjustment here. When I expand these chevrons, they're in the lower right area of this dialog box, I get a few more options, such as making the pattern associative. The associativity allows me to go back and modify the pattern after it has been created. The fitted option allows the three count that I have up here for both direction one and direction two to be fitted within five eighths of an inch rather than being spaced out every five eighths of an inch. I also have the ability to choose suppress. And here I can suppress certain items, which will turn them into construction lines. So I can also go back and return them to their normal unsuppressed state by selecting them again. When they are suppressed, they are actually showing up as construction lines when I finish the pattern command. Next, I will choose OK, either in the dialog box or by right clicking and choosing OK. And here I can see the four items which I suppressed as construction lines and then the other five, which are not. If I right click on any one of these, I have certain controls, such as editing the pattern, deleting the pattern, or suppressing elements all over again. And I have these controls because I had the associative option checked. Next, we'll look at a circular pattern. It works in a very similar manner. So when I grab circular from up here on the pattern panel, I select my geometry that I would like to do a polar or circular pattern on. Choose my center point of curvature. And with this, I can choose either a curve itself or the center point itself. I can adjust the direction, which way it's going to go. I also have the same associative and fitted options down below and the same suppression tools. This time I will not make this one associative to show the difference. So now once this has been created, if I right click on one of them, I no longer have the options to edit the pattern to go back to control what the spacing was. In the lower right, I'm going to do a mirror operation. For the mirror operation to work correctly, you have to have a line of symmetry or a mirror line to work with. Right now I have, it looks like one half of a profile. So I'm going to create a center line or a construction line between these two. I'll begin just by drawing a line across. Then I can select it and go back and choose either center line or construction line. Now when I begin my mirror command here, I can select my geometry to mirror. Here I'll use my window selection again. Make sure I grab everything. Then I can choose my mirror line from up here as well. Now I can choose this construction line to mirror it around. Right click and say apply or OK and it creates my mirror geometry on the other side. Now mirror geometry has a special consideration to it because since it was mirrored, it remembers that. If I were to go here and pull on this line, you can actually see that it does control a symmetric reference to the other side and vice versa. So if I go over here and pull on this line, it does it to the other side as well. Now generally I try not to mirror too much inside of a sketch because the part mirror is much more robust and for the same reason, I don't do a lot of circular and rectangular patterns inside the sketch mode because it limits some of your later functionality with Inventor. The more preferred way to do patterning would be through the feature tools for a rectangular feature pattern or circular feature pattern or a part mirror. It gives you much more control for more advanced assembly-based functionality for patterning that sketch patterns do not. If I were to say how often I use sketch patterns and mirroring compared to the feature equivalent for them, I would say about 90% of the time 
I would do that in the part mode instead of the sketch mode. In the rare case, you do run into a desire or a need to use these patterning tools inside of the sketch. Now you know how to use them.